Welcome to Play by Players, an MLSPA podcast. Now here's your host, former MLS player, Bobby Boswell. Hey everybody, um, pretty excited today. You know, we got one of the uh, one of the true gems of Major League Soccer. Uh, a lot of people have uh, very mixed feelings about him, especially guys like me that had to play against him uh, week in and week out. But uh, you know, he really is one of the unique souls in this in this league uh, at any given time, uh, any time period. And uh, Stephen Linhart's on the podcast today. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, Bob? <laughs> man, I'm excited, man. I, I think, you know, there's a there's a kind of a lot of people out there that I call them like the social media groupies, right? You got like the Jimmy Conrads and the Stuart Holdens and the Taylor Twelmans. Like you get a, a daily dose of them if you want, and, and they're really accessible. So I feel really honored that uh, we were able to get you as a guest just because I feel, you know, when we first started talking, you were – I joked around and said you were living a nomadic lifestyle, but at the time you, I think were in like uh, tra- going from England to Scotland and uh, just traveling the world. So uh, thank you so much for making time for us. Are you, are you in California right now? I'm currently in California. Yeah. I'm in Huntington beach, California. Huntington beach. All right. And how are you handling uh, the quarantine and uh, the coronavirus pandemic? Are you uh, good spirits or, or what, what's going on in your head? Yeah, I'm I'm in good spirits. I've uh I've basically been in quarantine the last four years. Uh <laughs> and now everybody's just kind of up to speed with me. Okay. Okay. Um, I joke when I say that, but but yeah, really I've I've kind of like shifted my focus to a lot more just like inward and like solitude stuff. Um like I've I've been getting into like 10 day silent retreats and just going off and doing my own thing for a while. I just got like a, a week long camping trip and outside Bishop by myself and did some long hikes. And, um, now I'm back here and at my house and I've been doing early morning swims and surf. I just got out of the ocean. I just surfed for a couple hours and yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm keeping to myself. I have like, I have a small network of, of people that I see my, my brother lives nearby. So we hang out a little bit, keep our distance, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm taking it in stride. I think this is a good, um, I mean, there's, you know, the, the polarity of this whole Corona thing, but I th- think it's, it's generally an okay thing for our society to kind of get a reality check for, um, like we're not the most, our economy is not the most important thing <laughs> as much as we think it is. There's something that's kind of <laughs> a little bit bigger and more in charge than us. So I'm okay. I'm, well, yeah, I, I, uh, you kind of touched on a lot of things that I, uh, I wanted to talk about and, and you brought up family. Um, you brought up yeah, solitude and hiking and, and being a water baby. Um, but let's, let's throw it back. I mean, we're going to, we're going to hit on all those. Uh, but you know, I was, when I, when I, I'm getting to interview guys, I always do a deep dive. Um, you know, you were a little bit, uh, more entertaining than most, but the, the interesting thing was I thought, you know, I'm a Florida guy. You were born in Florida. I never knew this yet. Yeah. Did you ever live there or did you move straight to California from there? Well, uh, 10 months I lived there and then I came straight here. Okay. So you went from one coast to the other, but, uh, you brought up surfing and stuff. You grew up uh, a water sportsman, it seems like, and, uh, and and you talked about your brother. Did did your your brother play water polo? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, he played water polo at UCLA. Did, did you play water polo? No, all my friends played in high school, and uh, I would jump in, and like that would be like a pickup game for yeah. me and my friends. We would play water polo, so I'm uh, I'm comfortable in the water. And I like every morning I swim with my brother and his UCLA, like some of his UCLA uh, teammates, um, like f- back then. Now, and I feel I feel pretty good in the water, man. I love I love the elements and just like sink or swim and being cold and feeling yeah. feeling all that stuff. Well, it's funny because water polo they say is you know people think it's kind of a you know they don't understand the sport I think, but it's like the most brutal sport underwater of like any you know of any sport right like it's just underwater it's like a full like you're ripping each other apart and kicking and screaming and 
but above the water, all you see is just the head and the ball. Um, mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's like a perfect sport for a guy like you, just, just having battle. You were so, you, know, you were so good, good with your body and your hands. Um, I feel like that's why I was curious when I saw you, you know, post some video or photo years ago with, uh, with him uh, in his Speedo. And I was thinking, this, of course, of course you played water polo growing up. It makes, it all made sense. I wish I played water polo more, man. I like, I was talking to my brother the other day and it was like, what sport would you play if, you know, if you didn't play water polo or soccer? And mine for sure is water I would okay. to have played that sport. I think it suits me well and my, uh, my <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to call the, <laughs> that other side of me that just. Okay. Yeah, no, I get it. Into the- and, and you brought up your brother, you, um, you have three siblings. Um, I I know your sister because I played in Houston with Adam Moffitt, mm-hmm. and um, you know they. I believe they met uh, when y'all when you played in Columbus. Uh, y'all were teammates, um, and they ended up getting married. Um, it's a. I have a funny story about your sister and I, and that I'm gonna share a photo here. Uh, let's see if this works. Um, this is a photo that I had on my Facebook, I still have it on my Facebook page, but you see in this at all? You're an asshole. Okay. So, so listen, this is an embarrassing story because you forget that you're friends with people that know other people in the league. And, and I put this photo up uh, years ago, obviously 2014. And, um, and I left a message cause I think it is a good one, right? You, you never did complain, but uh, I kind of want to touch on, we talk about being physical with each other. I loved, I loved going, uh, going at it with guys, especially guys like you, that it was more of like a, who can impose whose will on the other one. Um, you know, and I, I probably should have been red carded for that. And I, this, the committee probably should have reviewed that and, uh, and suspended me. But I feel like because of both your reputation and mine, there was no real sanctions on that. But, um, you know, talk to me, let's get this out of the way, you know, talk to me about, you know, the, the anti-hero or whatever these people want to label you, you know, I just thought you were a great, a great soccer player, but a physical guy and, and you gave people fits uh, when you played, um, you know, let's, let's get the soccer part out of the way now. Yeah, man, I'd love to, love to talk about it. Um, I think start general, get specific. Um, I think we all get through life in the way that we need to and there's so much of us that we don't like individually that we don't understand necessarily why we do what we do or how um like how things are you know kind of coming out of us and one of one of the ways that i move through the world is um like going at something as hard as i can like that is my like some people have a really nice first cut. Some people have amazing ability to like turn and see the whole field and play the perfect ball. Especially was direct, go after exactly what you want and you ability to to get that. And while I was doing it, it um, you know, it like I, I leaned into that side of myself like it was life for death um being a pro soccer player was you know so much fun and you know kind of like the the top of the the food chain um in regards to how sports is viewed in our in our culture so i wanted to do anything i could to stay there and um it wasn't like a a conscious thought that was like steven you have to be like at all costs, you have to win. That was just kind of what was like breathing me. That was like, whatever it took, I, I wanted to help my team win. And that was my muscle that like I, I used. Um, looking back on it, I have um, tons of mixed emotions and thoughts and like individual moments. And, you know, just as I unpack my, my own story and um, my relationships, but overall, I'm super thankful for the way that, like, me, this organism has 
lived and played and experienced the world. It's not pretty. Um, it has flashes of, of beauty, but I'm just like the rest of us trying to get through this thing and using the resources that I have. And, uh, I love the resources that I have. And while I was playing, you know, I love the individual battles that we would have. And um, I would have with Olave and, and all like Nat and all these guys that just like had the similar thing driving, you know, us and leaning into that. And when, when you can battle with someone else who's leaning into that same kind of, kind of thing, um, it doesn't matter how conscious or unconscious it was. It's like, there was a mutual respect that was just like, yo dude, like I know you're showing up and I know you're not going to stop. And whenever I like came against someone like that, it just, it like amplified that part of me that, you know, like I love so much and I don't know so well, like, um, so yeah, that's a little bit of my, of my view on the way that I, played i definitely had controversy and i definitely was the anti-hero and i have thoughts on that like why why fans and why people focus on that um specifically i think there's a lot of uncomfortability within our own selves of letting letting ourselves like really just like let ourselves out of the cage and essentially that was that was what i was doing every day in practice and in games it was the same i was letting this part of me that felt like it was in a cage out of the cage in a safe environment with rules with um you know with and 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 something that i reflect on is i i I did a really good job at finding the gray area while i played it wasn't like a conscious thing like i'm gonna go find the gray area but that's something that i've learned about myself is i will find the gray area and i will push the limit and sometimes I will go over the limit and that's okay too. Like, I think that's how we move forward in the world is like um, pushing the limit and seeing what's too much. And Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I definitely, I'm guilty of that too, man. And uh, you know, that was kind of, I think what gave me my edge, same with you, right? It's, yeah. it's, uh, and, and I think that it, it's funny because you know Adam and I, Adam and I would joke, Adam Moffat, and uh, we joke because Dom, you know Dom really, and I'm not talking. We'll get to Columbus, your your early time in Columbus, but we talk about playing you guys, and and you know you you added a whole different element to the other guys on that team, and and I I've gone back and uh, watched watched a lot of your goals. It's, you know, I can remember a goal you scored against us when I played. You know I always remember the goals we gave up, never any of the good stuff. Um, but you were, you were great at, at your space. You, you know, you talk about your first touch or, you know, some of these other things that separate guys, but, but your, your ability to move in the box was incredible. And, and, uh, for those of you that, that want to go watch, you know, he's got highlight reels online. MLS has put them out and just watch his movement off the ball. You know, you, you, you were able to find that. I, I felt like you were always sliding to the other, the backside defender and you knew, you knew if you got on the, you know, if you could get away from the, the guy in front of you, no one was ever going to get around you. And, you know, you, a lot of your goals were scored on these, these headers where they'd whip the ball in and you'd be the guy there waiting for it. And, um, you know, that's a very, that's a very good skill. And uh, it's a, it sucks to defend against. Um, so it wasn't, you know, you brought all the, the physical side to it, but at the same time you could turn it, turn around and just, you know, get loose and, and score some goals. And I, I think I saw a stat like, when you Wando and, uh, and, and Gordo were all healthy, like I think one year y'all had over like 50 goals, uh, which is, which is absurd. There's teams that don't even score 50 goals uh, a whole season. So it's crazy that just three guys were, were accountable for, for that many. And, um, you know, I, I think you kind of sell yourself short if you say, and I don't, I don't think you have a confidence issue with that, but I, I do think, uh, you know, when we talk about playing against you, it was always focused on you, uh, obviously, Wando, you know, knowing where he was, but you were always the more dangerous guy uh, just because you could get a guy thrown out of a game or get in someone's head, and then the whole game plan goes to goes to crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> that's, it's interesting, like, that area, I, I don't know too much about of what other teams, like, scouting reports were. I know that definitely happened every every week we have scouting reports, but it is, 
an interesting area to think about like what what is the other team scouting on this team and well Dom, well Dom would Dom would yell and be like don't let this guy he's just gonna you know and it would be funny because he Dom would get so emotional especially San Jose right because he had a, yeah. a, a, a connection but he'd get so emotional and then Adam would be like do you think he remembers that I'm related to that guy you know like <laughs> you know he's so quiet the quiet assassin you know but uh, it was just interesting. It was an interesting dynamic, but go, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but go, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, uh, this, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything else. Yeah, to say no, I got you. I got you. Well, uh, let's, I talked about Columbus. Um, you know, we talked about the people don't, uh, you know, I think they forget, uh, you, you know, you won a, an MLS cup in Columbus. You want to, you want a national championship in college. Then you go right into your rookie year. You win a Nash, uh, uh, MLS Cup. Uh, you are a three-time Supporter Shield winner. I mean, you, you've won some real hardware in this league, uh, but you get to, you get to Columbus. Uh, the, I'll never forget this. We, we flew to Columbus to play a game. It was the day before the game. We're on the, uh, we got there early. We're on the bus going to the hotel, and Jason Gary's on the phone with you, and you were going skydiving. Does that sound... Does that sound accurate? <laughs> the day before the game, I was going skydiving. <laughs> I, and it might have been the time – there was a period with Houston where we would go in two days early, but I feel like it was the day before. And, I, and Jason said, yeah, uh, Steven's going skydiving. And I was like, when? And he was like, today. He invited me to go right now. And I was like, that's not real. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> yeah. I think that day in particular, particular it it there was some wind so it didn't happen but skydiving <laughs> is something that uh I, I have done and I think uh I think bungee jumping is way scarier than skydiving okay yeah I've done I've done both of those as well and I'll I'll agree with that I don't like going head first uh with something tied to my ankles but where did you bungee jump at uh New Zealand Nevis where, where'd you jump uh Queens I think I was Dude, we uh, did the same bridge. That bridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the first bridge ever? Sky no, sky no, sorry. I did canyon jumping in uh in New Zealand. I bungee jumped uh I bungee jumped in Australia. Um All right. and I, I get hit in the head too much, man. I can't remember. I have photos of it to prove it, but I can't No, you don't you don't need to remember. I can't remember. But I've done I I had this phase uh back in two thousand you know, I used to backpack all over, uh, kind of do what I think you've done a little bit of, or a lot of really, um, you know, off season, I'd put a book bag on and just go travel, travel around. And it, sometimes I'd see people I knew, uh, but some, a lot of times I just would go on my own and, um, just kind of see, see what happened where, where I ended up. And I, I had a need to, to jump off things and, uh, I'm afraid of heights. So I kind of, that was a, a big thing for me was trying to challenge that and, did some stupid stuff now now I, you know, I want my wife to go skydiving but I don't think it's a good idea with kids that we do it on the same airplane uh, uh but, yes, break it up yeah but uh but no I mean we can talk about that I mean what, what, what about you, you, you I know you had a mobile home and I, I later in this I, I was want to talk about all the places you've traveled that I can at least that I know of um you know talk to me about when you go on these uh these hikes you know, where you're by yourself or you go camping, um, talk to me about the solitude and then, you know, the travels in general. Yeah. So the motor home era, I, at the end of like, um, like, let's see. So 2014 was like the last MLS game I played in. And then I was trying to get healthy, like, uh, 15 and 16, 2015, 16. And, and seeing a guy in LA who, who was working on me, a, a physical therapist, um, and I, I ended up just buying a motorhome, like a 1984 Toyota Dolphin. It's like super old school fiberglass, just like 21 foot ghetto, <laughs> like <laughs> beautiful uh, truck, motorhome. And that was kind of the start of me taking my in like my physical injury serious um and then it kind of like through the physical injury of like it it completely my my right leg completely locked up i had three surgeries and i was in a, 
a straight leg cast from my hip to my ankle for two months. Um, this is all the end of 2014. So I like the way that I expressed myself and, you know, like, I mean, you're experiencing it now, like we don't get to show up to practice and move our bodies and get in touch with these parts of ourselves that like have been with us since childhood. And so as that was kind of falling apart for me, um, it, it was like the window into deeper parts of myself that were also injured and that were also like not sustainable in a, in a sense. Um, so I was doing the work, getting the, the physical treatment in LA, living in my van, parking by the beach, um, just like needing to go inward, not being able to, to express and move myself. Um, so I started seeing a therapist and, and hopped in therapy a couple times a week. And it just kind of created this uh, environment for me to, to dive deeper into myself and ask myself some deeper questions. Like what, why am I playing? What, what is it that I'm getting out of it? How has playing served me? Um, and then a bunch of different avenues. That was the soccer specific, but basically what it, what I landed on was I need to spend more time with myself. I've, I've kind of not, I've kind of neglected getting to know me. Um, I've, I've let whatever other people and uh, coping mechanisms and adaptive ways that I've um, moved through the world kind of define who I am. And it was just kind of a, a time for me to, to step inward and really like drop into different parts of myself that I, I didn't really know were there. So that led me on a huge search. Um, <laughs> just, I got into, I got into a lot of things, a lot of somatic body work and um, stillness retreats and psychedelics and just like a bunch of traveling solo stuff. Um, and yeah, I went on the inward, the inward journey. And in many ways, that, that inward journey hasn't stopped. It's definitely, like, settled um, as I've, like, kind of become more comfortable in myself. But a lot of things changed, man. A lot of my relationships with humans, with soccer, with um, my family, with my environment, kind of, like, I brought everything to the table in that time. And it was because of my injury, it was because of these three surgeries that I had in like four months on my meniscus and that straight leg cast and How, like how's, the window. How's your, how's your leg doing now? I mean, is it still? My leg is good, man. I, I've recently gotten into like Qigong and yoga and I don't run as much. I'll, I'll like go for a little beach jogs. And, okay. Um, the water and swimming and kind of these slower meditative practices have really served my 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 organism but at the same time I do crave this like wild animal like primal way of expressing myself I don't think I'll ever be able to like get that <laughs> as soccer kind of gave, gave yeah yeah you know? no I get yeah I that's what I say. I'm, I'm in the real world working too. And it's like, you know, you used to be, if some guy made you mad, you'd get a, you get a chance to maybe give him a little love and love tap here or there in training. And you just, you don't have that in the real world. It, you know, you don't get to do that, but. I think in many ways it would serve the real world to, to have like a padded room and like, the <laughs> and just like, just go have a freaking. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, Huh? Well, I don't think you're, you're a big, you're a big guy. There's a lot, a lot, there's a lot of people that aren't big guys that would not, uh, would not agree with that. Although you never know. They might, they might, but. I don't know. You've seen dogs wrestle like. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> no, well. Um, Where are we moving to, man? Why, why, well, I want to go back to Columbus. You know, I was talking about skydiving and, uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to see if, if, that was like a normal, like, did you just like, w were you really getting ready for games? Was that a mental thing? Or, you know, I wanted to talk about that. Maybe you're not comfortable telling me what you're, if you no, even had it. Did you, did you, 
if you even had a routine, but um, you know, most, most guys, I think wouldn't go do uh, adventure sports uh, the a couple of days before a game, but I, that's, what's cool, man. That's what's unique. Yeah. I, I mean, soccer to me, <laughs> I, my story is unique in the way that like I came to pro soccer. So I was never like married to soccer. It was never like a, um, like if I don't become a pro, then I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. It was like, I got a call the day of the draft and it was like, all right, you're going to go do this. And I remember the, the decision to go to say like that when I said yes, to go play or try, like, I thought I made the team when I got drafted. I was like, Oh, I'm like, okay. And then I realized that I had to like make the team or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, like I was going to move to Africa and start a nonprofit with my friends in Zambia and sell bikes and live on a farm. And that's what I was going to do. So soccer to me was just kind of like, Oh, like it was a way to make friends. It was a way to express myself. But then when it actually became real, it was like, I'm not going to sacrifice this other side of myself that likes to ride motorcycles, likes to surf, likes to whitewater raft, likes to, just do just lit like live yeah feel extreme and like that's always been a part of me this adrenaline this like and so yeah I, I didn't really have like a like someone like uh, anybody else who's like well yeah I, I think the way I national team so I would just like part of what made me good was my ability to just live the way that I wanted to live and like really let that part of me out. And I think my coaches and my teammates understood that that's what was, uh, that's what made me tick is like being able to go for like a 10 mile skate around Columbus the night before a game. And like that gave me juice to like <laughs> show up as where a lot of other people like need to rest, play video yeah. games, yeah, be yeah. healthy. And I'm like the opposite. I'm like, I surf in the morning day of the game and I'll, go play and all the score like that's I have so much energy that just like <laughs> needs to come needs, out needs to express man well yeah I think you know this is the analogy I would use for what you're trying to explain and I'm I'm the king of horrible analogies so you can use this if you want but it sounds like you're saying uh, soccer is just a chapter of your book it's not the story of the book right I mean certainly yeah and it's and it sounds like it's not even you don't even want it to be that big of a chapter uh just you have a lot more uh a lot more chapters of your life that you're working on now so I mean inevitably soccer like like I like I kind of I I hid behind this thing while I played soccer like oh I'm more than a soccer player like look at what I'm doing um and upon reflection it's like soccer has defined so much of who I am and of how I've lived. So I, I wish while I was playing that I actually owned my soccer self a little bit more and like let myself come into the fullness of what that was. I always had this weird thing. Like I'm, I'm more than a soccer player. And that comes from a lot of my history and like growing up in the church and like being like humble and, wanting to have a platform to like <laughs> bring more people to the Lord. And like, that's kind of my old framing, how I used to, to be. So a lot of that is tied into it. But uh, yeah, while I was playing, I, w I wish that I had a little bit more like, yo dude, I'm, uh, I play professional soccer and this is a, a big part of how I use my energy because it certainly is when you're playing pro, it's like everything is oriented to that inevitably you know as much as you don't want it it's that's that's the reality is you're yeah. minting to that life well if it makes you feel any better i'm i'm the other way i wish i had and i feel like i did a lot more than most and off the field but i wish i had had some of that energy and and mainly been uh, more comfortable in my and doing those things and that's what i tell guys now when they ask me i say you know coaches are they're redoing the way they think um, you know, that guys are allowed to have a life off the field. And I, I say to embrace that because that that's what makes you cool and marketable and unique um, as opposed to the cookie cutter. Like you have to go to your room and play video games and just sit, sit there and, and not do anything, uh, you know, for all these 
all these off days and all this time, this downtime. But well, like what what's unique about I mean sports in general, but like soccer is like super artistic, and each person brings something unique to to the field. So if we're all expected to like, I mean we're all wearing the same uniform, but if we're all expected to like uh, show up to a game and have the same pregame to it, then like inevitably it's squelching out the uniqueness of, of how each individual goes. I think it's hard to control and manage like each individual and how, you know, because some guys will get out of control and, and all that. But I think finding the balance of encouraging that in your players to really express themselves apart from the soccer. And then that like just serves the team as, more people are comfortable in themselves and feeling like they're like using all their talents and like getting, getting into different parts, like as opposed to just being one way that like is trying to please one guy. It's just so limiting. And that's what I'm interested now in is um, bringing that to people is like, what are, what are other ways that we can look like we can look inside, look at yourself and you can like, express yourself as opposed to just being one thing for one guy and that's that's an interesting field for me is like what okay what's that about and a safe place to for guys to express that because so much of it is unknown and you know how we are with the unknown like look at our culture now like this whole thing is an unknown party and we're all flipping out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well you you talk about just connecting with people and i think anyone that's um you know there's a wonderful article out uh about you on the the athletic i think they just rehashed it as like their favorite uh their favorite article like ever written for soccer um uh, which is which is i think an incredible thing to say um but it talks in there a lot about you you know you you wanting to connect and, and connect with people and uh i i always joke about this but you you created a subculture of mls when you played uh, that no one knows about, and it's uh, it's of grown men crocheting around the country in airports when we travel and in locker rooms as a coping mechanism, or I don't even know what the word is, but I, I'll never forget when Eric Bruner uh, got traded to the Dynamo, and uh, he came in and started crocheting a hat uh, while we were on a trip, and it like it, everyone was like, what in the heck is going on? And then it turns out there's uh, all these guys that you played with, you know, whether they were in Columbus or uh, San Jose, like they, and then it trickles, right? Eric goes to Portland and then Portland, they start doing it. And uh, there's this, this, everyone attributes this back to you. And, and I'm looking at this blanket behind you on the door uh, <laughs> or whatever that is. I mean, is, is, are you still crocheting? I mean, is this, uh, is this, I, I mean, this crochet. Is, dude, l let me just, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no this could be this could be anything this this right here is my the first blanket that i've ever made and i crocheted it on on the plane on all the planes <laughs> when we when we traveled and i actually crocheted it for my mom and she didn't like it so i kept it <laughs> What an awesome story that she just doesn't want it, huh? Yeah, it like doesn't go with shit in her house. So I'm like, all right, I'll just keep it. That's awesome. But no, I mean, <laughs> you know, where'd you pick this up? I, did I read it? It's like a retirement retirement home you worked in or you helped? Yeah, I, I, learned in, I learned in my freshman year in college, there was a really cute girl that I liked and she taught me and I wanted to impress her. So I like learned really quick and I was like, yo, let's, let's crochet. And uh and then when I went to Columbus, I met this like activities director in a park of a senior senior center. And somehow we landed on like, I was like, I want to come in and hang out. And so I went in and I started talking to these women and like all of them had crocheted, but they all forgot. They were old man, like in their nineties. And so I retaught like 20 women in Columbus, how to crochet a beanie. And they would all make beanies throughout the week. We would meet every Monday. Like I would bring like Guillermo and Robbie and like, like just like random people in. 
and uh, we would crochet for a couple hours and then they would continue crocheting and then we would give all the beanies to like homeless people on the street and um, they would like come to the games, they would take the like bus to the games and then I would get a red card and they would ask me why I got a red card. And, asked me about offsides and like read the newspaper every day. And like, it became like this really cool source of connection. <laughs> it's random. No, that's awesome, man. That's, that's even cooler than I thought, man. I just remember, I just remember being like, what are you doing? And, uh, and you know, Bruner, Bruner's an interesting cat <laughs> in and of itself, right? Like he, it's funny. He was like on this thing called Twitch at the time. And we all made fun of him for being on this thing called Twitch. And now it's like the future of the world in gaming. Um, I don't know what Twitch is, but yeah. I trust Bruner's. No, we, we made, we, we made fun of him and now it's like, it's a big deal. And I think, I think that's his job now. He's a professional gamer. So it's like the jokes on all of us um, that, you know, but I remember, I'll never forget him pulling that out on the first team trip. And we were just like, what are you doing? And it was like, he was like, you guys are weird, not me. Like everyone in MLS does this. It, it was like, oh man, this is awesome. But, but I'll, um, I'll try to wrap this thing down a little bit uh, just for the sake. I, I could talk to you all day, man. I love your, I love your perspective and, and what you're doing. Um, but I, I do want to talk about that. Um, I, are you, you know, last night I had heard you were, you were studying medicine and, some of these, uh, some of these less popular methods uh, from your time over, and I think it was like Laos um, or, or somewhere in the in the Viet Vietnam, Thailand, China uh, part of the world. You were you were working on you were going to retreats and trying to figure out uh, how you could best connect with people. Uh, what what are you working on now? What am I working on now? I just completed a license, uh, like a licensing to, so I can work with like bodies in California. Like a, it's a massage therapist license. Um, my interest is not massage. My interest is, um, it's called craniosacral therapy. And it's exactly kind of what we were talking about with um, players being, viewing, viewing ourselves as, as one way and it's kind of like bringing it's a perspective shifter it's like um when like we have these we have these narratives in our head that like create an identity of who we are of who we think we are and then we, we like live according to those narratives and the craniosacral therapy is it's used in many different um ways but the, the premise is stillness and touch and presence and when those when those are combined are us as humans it it creates a safe space for the organism to go from like a sympathetic engaged and like hyper vigilant what like following the stories in our head and it gives the ability for those to kind of just like settle and be held in a neutral way and then it allows other parts of us to come online but the touch and the presence and the neutrality and the stillness are all parts of the um the puzzle that 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 kind of need to be there for us to drop into a little bit down tempoed part of ourself and then that allows us to explore the unknown um and that's become my focus is is exploring the unknown and finding ways that I can help other people explore the unknown and you know be a be a beacon for other people to push into areas that that maybe aren't that comfortable because it's kind of scary to go into to the void and you know like we create all these concepts and and ways of being in the world and to push against those it feels like death it feels like why would i let down my defenses my adaptive ways of moving through the world like that feels scary to me like i can't i can't let that happen but what i provide is is this presence that allows people who are interested to go into deeper parts of themselves and i i basically just hold space with people as as they explore and, and every time it, like I, I do provide this, um, something happens. It's kind of, it's a trip and there's always something um, 
that emerges and it it's fun because I never know how it's going to go, but it requires every part of me to show up and to be there. So I'm kind of like a therapist in a way, but like, um, but not really. It's, it's, it's an alternative way of, of, uh, of doing things for sure. But it's, it's something that I've gravitated towards because it's helped me land deeper inside of myself and i have reasons why i've needed to go in in that direction through through my own emotional traumas and and all of whatever physical stuff and like identity loss and um like i've uh, you know i've done an, a, a fair amount of work in regards to trying to learn what makes me tick and what's breeding me nonetheless like that's yeah, I think I think you're more aware than most people are uh, of yourself for sure. So, um, mm -hmm. and like I think it goes back to like you said, or like I said earlier, it's about you connecting again, and you're finding a new way uh, to connect to people. I know uh, personally, I was excited. I know that the uh, the PA people were really excited that you were you were agreeing to to do this, and just just from soccer people in general I know soccer is just a chapter of, of your book but it, it's a it's one where you, it's an indelible one and I think um, people would love to hear from you more and they'd love to you know at some point I know you you're working on some other things but I would love to see here if you're in LA or San Francisco or something love to see you out at a game just to uh, yeah, any anytime you pop in man I guarantee you that they're going to make a, a story about it because people want to know where you're at and um, you know, like I said, I think the more that people become aware of, uh, I, of how self-aware you are, they like you even, even more, um, you know, and, it, and people are curious. So I, I would say, keep, keep doing things like this. You always have a platform with me, but, um, I thank you so much for coming on and, and kind of opening up, uh, and what's going on in your life. I know a lot of people were, were really curious and, uh, this will hopefully whet their appetite. Uh, we'll keep in touch and, and, you know, we'll see how this goes. I'm sure uh, this will generate some questions. If you guys want to know more, um, you know, make sure you, you hit me up on, on all the social media channels, uh, things you'd, you'd like to know more about Lenny. And uh, I can always uh, maybe set up another call at some point, do a deeper dive if you've got the time. And uh, the, the charity that I want to, I want to shout out is uh, soccer without borders. It's a, uh... There's a few different. Can can you hear me? It froze. I don't know. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Soccer without borders. Yeah, soccer without borders. It's a, it's an amazing organization. Started in Oakland. Uh, they're in Baltimore and I think Denver, a few other places. But look them up. SWB. It's a. They bring soccer to communities, refugee communities in America. So they, they provide the youth um, who otherwise would just be here. Um, as a new um just a new random face in a big big community um and it's bringing connection through soccer in these communities there's tons of refugees but tommy thompson's done some work in oakland clarence goodson um i myself volunteer there um look them up they've been going for like 12 years and a thriving community of refugee kids from all over the world coming together and creating this family around soccer. And it's all built on cooperation, community and competition, like falls way down at the bottom of the list. Um, it's more of a way of keeping kids out of gangs and drugs. And um, it's just a, an amazing, <laughs> go check it out if there's one in the area they're always looking for people to come and just hang out with these kids because a lot of them don't have parents and have gnarly stories so when I went there they they asked me if I was a refugee myself <laughs> <laughs> I took as a really great honor I was like and then the other the other one is a uh, kickstart joy Medi Medi Bellucci and I we've uh we've gone to to the border of Syria the last three years, uh, Jordan, in Jordan, there's big refugee camps of Syrians who have been affected by the war there. And like 80,000 people in these camps and six, over 60% are kids. And we bring tons of gear and provide like a couple day camp and just support the coaches that are already on the ground there, the local Syrians, um, and just kind of bolster their, uh,
um, their approach. We, we bring joy, we bring a speaker, we dance, we, we like have- I've, see, I've seen you dance. I've seen you dance. It's impressive. Yeah, I'll break it off. It's like a twerk. Um, but th those are two, two things that I'm interested in. Soccer Without Borders and Kickstarter Joy. That's awesome, man.